I don't care what anyone has to say, July 31st of 2022 was a historic night for the music industry. But what else can we expect from a BTS member? He did not only broke record after record that night, he also showed an outstanding artistic versatility and did something that so many artists are afraid to do. He showed his two sides and was proud of both of them. Recently, I made a video titled J-Hope's Growth, where I talk about who J-Hope is as an artist. And my main point was that he is one of those artists who are just so naturally talented. But the thing with J-Hope is that he doesn't stop there. He always wants to grow and grow and grow, and that's what he did. His debut in BTS was amazing, and no one can deny that that is already part of music history. But it's rare to get to work with living legends. I mean, they are young, but they're still, at this point, living legends. Yeah. Then, his first solo mixtape, Hope War, was a statement of who he wants to be as an artist. He wants to be the hope of people, but while he does that, he explains the consequences of being such an influential person. So the world he paints called Hope War is colorful, beautiful, exciting, and even glamorous. But you can also see the dark side of this world if you don't get fooled by the colorful attractions and actually read the lyrics. And he's not complaining either, he says that this is what he wants, this is his dream, but he's also aware that not everything is as beautiful as it seems. This album is colorful and fun, but the lyrics are dark and that was intentional. This dark side was explored by J-Hope in his most recent solo project Jack in the Box, which has darker visuals and stronger hip-hop and rock sounds. I saw some people saying that this is the real J-Hope, but I don't think they are paying attention. He was always like this. He was always and still is J-Hope from Hope World and J-Hope or Jack from Jack in a Box. He's been saying this all this time, you just have to listen closely to what he's saying. This exploration of both sides of J-Hope and the connection between them are beautifully represented in his Lollapalooza performance, an event where he became the first Korean artist to headline a major US festival. But before I talk about Hobby Palooza, I want to explain Jack in a Box because it's a necessary step to truly understand his performance. The album's concept revolves around the Greek myth of Pandora's box, a story that is narrated in the intro. The story of Pandora's box is about Pandora, the first mortal woman created by the god of fire. Finally, Zeus bestowed two gifts on Pandora. The trade of curiosity and a mysterious heavy box he instructed her not to open under any circumstances. Inevitably, Pandora, led by her curiosity, opened the box. What Zeus had kept inside the box broke loose from their confinement. And with that, she set free all the evils in the world. All that was foul was now unleashed upon the world. As she grieved, she heard a feeble quiver from the box. She lifted the lid once more and out fluttered a small, bright, most beautiful creature she had ever seen. The only thing that was left in the box was hope. Hope gave people the will to carry on living amidst the pain and strife. So the theme of this album is a continuation of Hope World. This is a world of pain and suffering, but there is still hope. The difference is that Hope World focuses more on hope, while Jack in the Box focuses on the evils on the world, the evils that left the box. First, Jacob is the hope in Hope World, and then he is the hope in Pandora's Box. His previous music, including Hope World, was him being in the box, but now he can understand and share with the world a little more of his shadows. <laughs> In the next track, Pandora's Box, Jacob explains how he became the hope in Pandora's Box, or in other words, the hope of BTS. So, he basically explains the Greek myth I just mentioned. He says, The good faith given by the great gods to mankind, a ray of light left in the box by Pandora, projected onto an innocent young boy. He is that young boy. He is the hope of BTS. And that title was given to him, in the myth by the gods, and in real life by fate. In the chorus, he mentions Pandora's hand. 
This is the hand that can be seen in the album cover. This is why him, Hope, lays in a black and white outfit in Pandora's hand. He says that the first step of his artistic career, Hope World, or in other words, him staying inside the box, was necessary because that allowed him to dream of hope. That's why he quotes himself during Hope World. But now he has lived and he can see through the world, and in other words, the box was open, so now he can recognize the high figures that fire people up. Before he was the hope in Hope World, but he did not know why. He just knew that he wanted to be hope so bad. He wanted this dream so bad. But now Pandora opened the box. Now he has lived and learned about the evils of the world. And with the box already open, he can now finally understand and believe in his name. <laughs> We can see Pandora's box being opened in the next track's music video, More. And in this song, we are introduced to another concept the album explores, which is the actual Jack in the Box, a jester clown that jumps out from a box. The expression Jack in the Box is said to have originated from the story of Sir John Scorn. In order to protect the people of Norfolk, the man claimed to have caught the devil and held him captive in his boot. This theory adds up with Jacob's album cover, where the design of the letter J is in the shape of a clown boot. So in the music video, everything happens inside a box. This box has two personas, one in black and one in white. The one in black is said to be Jack, who according to the Jack in the Box story, this is the scary entity that jumps out of the box. And according to the Pandora's Box myth, these are the evils of the world Pandora let free. So J-Hope in black represents J-Hope's darkest shadows and thoughts, while J-Hope in white represents J-Hope as the hope in Pandora's Box, as the hope of BTS and the world. This is why in his Lollapalooza performance, he performed the darkest song Songs both lyrically and musically in a black outfit, and the brightest hopeful songs in white. Both versions are j -Hook. In the music video, Jack is seen in an office space similar to the one in the movie Fight Club, which shows a monotonous repetitive lifestyle where there is no creativity. And you know that this is Jack because he is wearing black and the main character in Fight Club is also named Jack. So we can see Jack mocking the office manager while the other workers clap at him like he did the funniest thing ever because he's acting like a clown. He is acting like the clown Jack from Jack in the Box. After that, we see Jack getting an x-ray while he wraps his most deep desires. This is the the most raw version of J-Hope. The lyrics of more basically say the same thing I mentioned in my last J-Hope video. He always wants more. He wants to this day perform in the stadiums with his fans. He wants the trophies. And even though he knows that fame and money don't mean anything, working on music makes him breathe. So he wants more. There's also a phrase he repeats which is I'm still. And this phrase requires cultural interpretation. He is actually not saying that he is a failure and that is why he wants to get better. In Korea, this phrase is seen as motivation. I'm still not enough is not a negative phrase. Instead, it's a way of saying to oneself that we can be better. See it as I'm not done yet. I'm not saying I'm bad, I'm just saying that I'm motivated to be even better. That's what more is about. In the next song, Stop, Jacob talks about the evils of the world that were set free when Pandora opened the box. His main thought is expressed in the Korean title of the song, which is, there are no bad people in the world. So he's basically telling others to stop fighting because he has the hope that people are not bad by nature. Stop, 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 don't fight. He starts the song with his personal experience with a friend of his and his conflicting attitudes. To then talk about the global issue, he says that he watches the news and sees all the crimes humans commit and he asks himself why. He feels hurt, bitter and disgusted and wonders how they can be considered humans. But as soon as he thinks that, he says to himself. Stop, 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 calm down. And then he starts thinking a little more and realizes that maybe they are the victims of their environment, their education, the system, or at least that's what J-Hope wants to believe. He says this while we hear conflict in the back. He 
He finishes the song letting people know that small actions lead to big movements that can change the world, reminding us why his name is J-Hope. <laughs> J-Hope continues his reflection about humanity in the next song, Equal Sign, which shows his desires for people to be treated equally, regardless of race, culture, nationality, social status, or position. He says that we all breathe, dream, laugh, and cry the same. And that is why each and every one of us deserves to be respected. He also mentioned that him singing the chorus in English was a deliberate choice to show that even though he's not that good at English, that doesn't stop him. At the centerpiece of the record is Music Box Reflection, an ominous instrumental that combines heavy breathing with an eerie music box melody, fast drums, and a scratchy beat. It serves as an interlude to the story, allowing its creator to shift lanes from the album's first message fail half to a more introspective second part. Then, J-Hope questions what would have happened if he wasn't J-Hope in the next song, What If. What if, The song, which samples old Diddy Buster's song Shimmy Shimmy Ya, yeah, explores the question if the regular human being John Hosok, who doesn't have anything, would have been able to tell the story he can tell as J-Hope. He says that maybe it's arrogant to think that he would have been able to do so even if he had nothing. So if one day all the money, fame, wealth, and following get taken from him and he finds himself at rock bottom, will he still be able to say this message of love yourself and have hope? That is the question he has for himself in What If. In the next track, Safety Zone, we find Jacob hunting for a secure spot where he can fully unwind and unload. And let's remember that this is Jack talking. These are his deepest, darkest thoughts. J-Hope says maybe his safe song are the cheers of people who believe in him. But Jack answers that he'll feel cold when they turn their back on him. J-Hope says that maybe his safe song is the people who've let him. But Jack tells him to think carefully because he he is still a threat. Jacob says that maybe his safe zone is his family, someone he shares blood with. But Jack says that there's a mission or common goal that they don't share. They don't understand his passion for music. This is why Jacob keeps asking himself, where is his safe zone? And does it even exist? So if Jack keeps bringing Jacob's darkest fears and anxieties, what is his purpose? Why is he here? Why should Jacob be proud of something so negative? Weaver's magazine wrote, Jack in a box seems as though it acts as a mental stamp or safe zone from which J-Hope can conduct personal reflection. He lifts his inner Jack out of the box, his safety zone, and takes a look at himself. Jack may come across as J-Hope's dark side for the spooky mood he exudes, but he actually appears to be a guy who helps J-Hope towards self-reflection. This self-reflection is explored in future. A children's choir sing the chorus of the song Future, representing a group of people who have a long future ahead of them.
In this song, J-Hope knows that the future cannot be determined. The closer it is, the scarier it gets, and it's harder to deal with alone. He doesn't deny reality or try to escape it. Instead, he chooses to be the most suitable and tries to fight for himself and ask himself. He will rather have a future that looks necessary to him and finds hope through courage and faith. 뭔가 이 세상의 흐름을 거스르지 않고 그냥 한번 강물처럼 흐르면 흐르는 대로 한번 살아보자 그냥 있는 그대로의 내 모습을 마주하며 어떠한 뭐 방황이 있건 뭐 풍파가 있건 시련이 있건 그내 자신이 또 해결해 나가면서 한번 살아보자. This is the brightest track of the album, and even though it's not completely optimistic and upbeat, it's still a comforting message to himself, which carries a hopeful future. The last song and lead single of the album is Arson. Here, we first see the hopeful version of J-Hope, the one in a white outfit, realizing that his burning passion and desires burn everything around him. The fire represents fame, money, and popularity, all things he already accomplished. That's why he's done everything already. And this fire, this success, brought out the Jack in him. His hopeful self in the white outfit was burned by this fire, by this success. And now he is in between. His outfit is black and white. So he asks himself, let's keep burning or is it done? Burn, burn. But there is still this desire to keep everything burning. He still wants more. This is why he just turned his most deep thoughts into an album. Making art based in self-reflection is likely a long-standing desire for both J-Hope and BTS. It's a desire for all artists, one that like the hope that remains in Pandora's box, won't disappear even after everything else has burned to the ground. Jack in the Box is considered J-Hope's official debut, since this is his first solo album. Hope World was a mixtape, but Jack in the Box was promoted as a proper first album. The single cover of Moon, as well as the Jack in the Box cover, were part of an official collaboration with the American artist and designer Koss. And if you know, this is very special because the members of BTS have been fans of him for years. They love showing their collections of his characters, and this meant a lot to J-Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Hope's J-Hope was not only heavily involved in the songwriting process, but also the creative process. So he made sure to match the themes of the album with the content related to the album. From the album visual music video directing, album artwork, and many other things, I was able to do all he decided to have simple black and white outfits that represent the two sides he is exploring. They represent the crossroad of choices. The black hat was designed by himself and represents the clown that is part of Jack in the Box. He also organized a listening party in Korea with some of his friends from the industry one day before the release of the album. And of course, the guys of BTS were there. Except for Suga who then said he couldn't go because he felt a little ill and was afraid it was COVID. But don't worry, he ended up being fine and he's healthy. Jacob also designed a very creative physical album which falls in the form of a box. Also, there are visualizer videos for every song on Bangtan TV's YouTube channel. So if you want to listen to the songs while reading the lyrics and watch fun visuals, now you can. These count as official streams, so try to avoid those useless color-coded videos. This album made J-Hope the highest charting Korean soloist, and he joins BTS as the only Korean act to enter Spotify's global top artist top 10. He is also the first case soloist ever to enter the top 50 and the first Korean act to headline a major U.S. event. Yeah. 
This album and the two sides of J-Hope are beautifully represented in his Lollapalooza performance, where he makes a distinction of J-Hope in black and J-Hope in white. The day is July 31st of 2022, only two weeks after the release of the album. J-Hope is expected to perform from 8.50 to 10 p.m. Fans have been waiting since the day before for a chance to be at the front of the stage. The rest of American armies are watching the performance on Hulu, and more than 16 million people from around the world are watching the performance for free through Weavers. And just so you can understand the magnitude of this performance. One of the partners of Lollapalooza and the major of Chicago introduced J-Hope on the festival's main stage. Are you And then the performance starts. The setlist has been carefully created by J-Hope, who has been heavily involved in the creative process of both the album and the concert. And you will notice that the setlist is cohesive and makes so much sense. We can listen to the Jack in the Box intro explaining the story of Pandora's Box. Then J-Hope jumps out of Pandora's Box and sings the pre-release single More in a black outfit. He then raps about how he became the hope in Pandora's Box and basically the hope in BTS. This song opens the door to Baseline, which explains with further detail the baseline of J-Hope's music, movement, life and success. If you want more specific explanations of his older songs, you can watch my J-Hope's growth video. I explain everything there. Since he's talking about the baseline, or in other words, the starting point of his career, he raps his verse from Cypher Part 1, the oldest BTS Cypher from 2013. And since he's already talking about BTS, the next song he performs is Hansan. This is a tribute to BTS from his first mixtape, Hope World. Then he talks for the first time. Okay, home for BTS. But you can call me Jay. A lot of you may be seeing me for the first time today. He then sings Peace of Peace, a song where he wishes to be the peace of peace for people. So if this song is so positive, how can it be in the first half of the concert, if he's wearing black and he's singing the darkest songs? Because if you read the lyrics, you will note that he confesses that this is a world of mistakes and suffering, and that is his motive to deliver courage, strength, and hope. This is the perfect song to have next to his first speech introducing himself, because this song explains why he is called J-Hope. He continues the message of peace in the next song, Equal Sign, which shows shows his desires for people to be treated equally. He then tells people to stop with the fights and conflicts, so we can all be part of the blue side, a beautiful and calm place where we can feel safe. You know, a safety zone. But like I said before, he doesn't know where this safety zone is. What if it doesn't exist? And of course, J-Hope pays tribute to the artist he samples, putting his face in the big screen. He then performs the album's main single, Arson, where he raps about his burning passions and desires. After this song, he gets inside the box again, and we can hear Music Box Reflection, which marks the first half of the concert. And then, Hope comes out of Pandora's box in a white outfit to perform the happy BTS song, Dynamo Tropical Remix, with a fresh new choreography. Then, J-Hope talks again, yep, and then he submerges you into the daydream that is being in BTS, to then sing his BTS solo song, Ego, with the choreography we are familiar with. He then welcomes you to his Hope World, with a new choreography never seen before. He talks a little more, I was here on BTS tour three years ago. The next song is when I perform for you back then and performs a song we are already familiar with, his BTS solo song Just Dance. Then Jeho performs the long-awaited chicken noodle soup with Becky G for the first time. And of course, he gives a shout out to the original artist. Shout out to DJ Webster and Young before the track. Becky says a few words. As an artist, this moment right here means so much to me. Because I am not only so honored to be here, but also so proud. And then J-Hope has his last speech in Korean. Finally, J-Hope performs Future, a calm song where he sees at his future with hopeful eyes. Here ends the headlining performance of Lollapalooza's main stage. I love this new J-Hope, or maybe not new, but a little more open. Okay, play this shit. Good. You, fucker! What the fuck? you guys are fucking crazy. The locals and the staff's reactions were priceless. <laughs> 
You can see the multiple comments on Lollapalooza's subreddit by non-fans that found themselves enjoying the performance and getting surprised by ARMY's energy and the ARMY bombs. I also love how Jacob carried BTS with him throughout his performance. He could have kept himself as independent from BTS as much as possible, but instead he referred to his fans as ARMY. First, I want to thank my fans, ARMY. He introduced himself as J-Hope from BTS. I'm J -Hope from BTS. He performed BTS songs, he put BTS pictures on the big screen, and he mentioned Chicago itself in relation to BTS. I was here on BTS tour three years ago. He also interacted with Jimin, who flew from Korea to see his performance and show him support. And my favorite thing of this whole performance was the fan chants, because there was not a lot of time for armies to familiarize ourselves with this album. Before Lollapalooza, we had 30 days with more, and only 2 weeks with Arson and the other 8 tracks of the album. So you would think that these new songs wouldn't get as much fan chants as the other older songs, especially since they are fast raps in Korean, and this is a US music festival. But that didn't happen. Everyone was screaming so loud and knew the lyrics of not only Hope World and the BT songs, but also a two-week-old album. Also, J-Hope broke so many records that night. J-Hope became the first Korean artist to headline a major US festival. And listen to that closely. It's not only Korean solo artists, it's Korean artists in general. There was not a single Korean group or solo artist to headline an event like this. The announcement came at a time where festival goers were already buying tickets, despite having no artist lineup, so tickets were already on sale. But as soon as J-Hope was announced as the headliner, the website to buy tickets exploded, and for the first time in history, Sunday tickets were sold out first, since his performance was scheduled to be on a Sunday. This performance also was J-Hope's official debut, since this is the first time ever he performed as a solo artist. So this is also the biggest debut of a Korean artist, and I would say it's also one of the biggest debuts in general ever, because who else can say that their debut performance was headlining a major US festival? Lollapalooza knew what kind of public army is, so they had a merch booth specifically dedicated for J-Hope, and half of the overall festival's merch was J-Hope merch. More than $1 million worth of merch was sold on the festival. This is probably the very first time that I have ever seen Seed represents have a merchandise booth for one artist by the main stage. This is just nuts. Like I was at Coachella, it wasn't like this for Harry Styles at all, it wasn't like this for Metallica here or Dua Lipa. His performance drew a total of 105,000 music fans on the main stage, and J-Hope became the highest ticket-selling artist in Lollapalooza's history. Finally, after proving himself as an artist and breaking all these records, he went to his hotel room and turned on b -Live with his friend and bandmate Jimin to thank Armies now as a newly minted maker of history.